Samaritan is, is the Christ, the wounds is the disobedience, the beast of the burden, the body of Christ, the end which takes in MV1 is the church and the Samaritan promise, the second coming of the Christ. So basically what, what the problem is, is trying to spiritualize things that is not necessary or that is not needed. You know, yung in-spiritualize na yung mga bagay-bagay na hindi nyo naman dapat kailangan spiritualize. Because the parable of the Good Samaritan is so simple that anyone can understand. There is no secret meaning about it. You know, hindi, we don't need to, to, to try to dig a deeper meaning about it. Kasi maraming ganyan eh. You know, there are a lot of people like that. That everything that they do, they always spiritualize things. Oh, nagkasakit ako. Ah, ano kaya ang spiritual meaning nito? Nagkasakit ka lang, may spiritual meaning na. No? You know, we have to understand that reading the Bible, there are certain portions in the Bible that alego, 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 I'm heavy on a hard, a hard time pronouncing it. But anyway, there are some portions in the Bible that you have to understand that it's symbolic. Especially when, when, you, when you pass those scriptures about uh, the wings of the Lord. You know, yung, yung, the face of the Lord is like a lion. It doesn't necessarily mean that the face of the Lord is really looking like a lion. But we have to understand that it's a symbolic thing. Right? So we have to dig a deeper meaning. Aligo, aligo, kali, okay? But the parable, but the parable of the Samaritan, you don't have to. Because it's a simple, direct to the point story that the Lord just want, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ just simply wanted to point out something. Okay, so that is the problem during the early church time. May mga tao that they are trying to find a deeper meaning on simple things. Okay, how about in the modern day time? Look at this. Actually, I found this in the internet. Uh, it's, you can find this in sojourn.org. And I saw this, uh, you know, have you heard that word, uh, to be a good Samaritan? What is the first thing that comes to our mind when we say, be a good Samaritan? To be a giver, right? to be compassionate. That is the very first thing that, that the people would, the common people would know is, you know, being helpful, being a Samaritan, yung tutulong ka if somebody is needed. Okay. That's wrong. And, you know, this is what I'm trying to say, you know. A lot of us, sometimes we really don't, do not understand the fullest meaning. We just simply thought, oh, being a good Samaritan, just be, it's just to give. Well, honestly, there's nothing wrong about it. But the problem is, it is not complete. It is not complete. Let, let me explain. You know, uh, the problem during the modern, the modern church time, look at this. This is the sojourn orb. The sojourn orb, if you, uh, when I click on their website, on the donate portion, you could see that uh, they're, use, they're using the verse, and thy shall love your neighbor. They're using verse. You know, printing, you know, uh, uh, basically, they want, if you want to donate, in their website, they can provide you a t-shirt with the Bible verse. Okay? Thou shall love your neighbor as, uh, and you shall love your, your neighbor t-shirt. Actually, the price is $18 if you want to donate on them. Okay? And they are basically, there was a comment here, actually, you don't see it, but I highlighted it. You just go there, sojourn.org. The Bible command us to love thy neighbor as yourself. They use Leviticus 19.18, which is okay. But this is what they said. But we prefer to take it one step further and love our neighbor even they are not like ourselves. So they are basically changing it. They are, getting, they, they are trying to get the, the, the context of giving, of loving thy neighbor uh, to promote donations. There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong. Okay? There's nothing wrong. But this is where it, it, it comes wrong. When, when, when you go to their website, they are supporting LGBT. Uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans, trans, 
<laughs> so that's the problem. If you go to their website, they are basically supporting the LGBT community. And basically the way they, they are asking for some assistance is using the Bible verse about the Good Samaritan. So basically they are telling, be a Good Samaritan. You know, donate to people. But that is wrong. Because they are using that context in the wrong purpose. The purpose is to make donation to be, to be com uh, compassionate. Okay, let me go to my concept. Compassion is a good virtue. Okay, you must be When we give, when we when we begin kind to people, it's a good virtue. There's nothing wrong on it. But still, if we're going to understand the parable of the Good Samaritan, it is not complete. This is why many is familiar with this parable, but most commonly misunderstood it. Marami tao, you know, a lot of people know the parable of the Good Samaritan. Everywhere you go, you know, organization upon organization, they, they would give alms, they would help the poor, they would always use this, this slogan, you know, be a good Samaritan. But the problem is they misunderstood the real meaning of that parable. We're going to jump on it. Many is familiar with the story, but not with the point of the story. But this is expected, just like what I mentioned to you a while ago, as what we have learned from the Lord. Because the Lord said, He will reveal the truth to those who wanted to know it, and to conceal the truth to those who were indifferent. And that is the reason why they are misunderstanding it. Because the Lord is trying to, he, to hide it from them. And this is what we're going to study. This is what we're trying to reveal. And that is the reason why revealing the neighbor, the good Samaritan. So that we could understand the real meaning of the parable. Again, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with good virtues, being compassionate, okay. Yan. But is that what's the real context about the parable of the good Samaritan? We will see. And let me go now to the body of my message. My preposition, you know, uh, this afternoon, allow me to share with you our message entitled, Revealing Our Neighbor, the Good Samaritan. We will try to understand this so that we will not miss uh, what is intended for each one of us and we have to, so that we could fully understand its point. So let me go now to the body of the message. Revealing Our Neighbor, the good Samaritan. Okay, so this will I will, so this afternoon I'll be talking on on uh, this subject about the parable of the good Samaritan in three points. The first point is the occasion of the parable. We will understand why this parable has been introduced. What's the occasion? Second, we will try to understand the overview, the real meaning, the real intention why this parable has come about. And lastly, we will try to understand or the observation about this parable. So let's start. Verse 25, and this, we're studying the occasion of the parable. And about, what is the situation at that time? Why is this, this parable came about? Okay, in verse 25 it says there, on one day an expert, on uh, one occasion an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus by asking him, this is what he said, teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Okay, so what can we see here? The first thing that we could see here is the character uh, involved in this situation. Number one is the expert in the law. You know, the expert in the law are the lawyers, okay? These are not just ordinary lawyers. These are lawyers, or these are scribes, lawyers uh, of, of the commandments, of the law. Scribe, uh, this word scribe, a person who writes book or document by hand in hieratic uniform or other script and that may help keep track of records for priests and government. Okay, you have to see that. These are lawyers, okay? These are not the lawyers of the modern day. These are the lawyers. Okay. 
So, you know, the text, the text tells us that this lawyer comes to our Lord and asks him this question to put Jesus to death. It is a hypothetical question because he appears to be a seeker, but he is not. He's not really seeking to be taught by Jesus, nor he is interested in finding the way to eternal life. Wala siyang ganong intention. He believes, he understands all things. Ang pagkakakilala niya sa sarili niya is he knows everything. You know, he does not believe that Jesus Christ, an uneducated man, as far as he thought, could possibly teach him. Yung ang alam niya, hindi naman ako kaya tuwan ni Jesus Christ. Pero let me try and approach him and test him. He forged respect for Jesus as a teacher of the law. But he is only seeking to test Jesus by questioning him so that he can say, your teaching is not consistent with the law. That is his intention. Kaya siya lumapit sa Panginoon, the reason why he opposed the Lord Jesus Christ, because he wants to humiliate Jesus Christ and tell him, your teaching is not in line with the law. So when the lawyer asks, what shall I do to inherit the inter uh, eternal life? This phrase is not from the Old Testament. Wala kayong mababasa. You can uh, never read this from the Old Testament. No? What shall I do to inherit the kingdom of uh, Inherit the, king, uh, the eternal life. You know, on the Old Testament law, you will see the word, do this and live. And the lawyer is using Jesus' terminology in asking, what is the essence of your teaching? He wants to take the bottom line of Jesus' system and compare it with the bottom line of Judaism so that he can say, your system is wrong. So basically, he approached the Lord Jesus Christ with only one intention. Para payahin niya ang Panginoon Jesus. To humiliate the Lord Jesus Christ. That is his only intention. Remember, he is an expert of the law. And what can we see here? You know, we can see here self-righteousness. Uh, no, self you know, building oneself in the expense of other people. They want, they would like to, to uh, climb the ladder in the expense of other people. So this is the, you know, ito yung, ito yung, this is the character of this, uh, of this lawyer. He is untruthful with selfish intention and wrong motive. And look at what Jesus uh, replied uh, on, on, this, uh, on this question. So Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? You know, what was the law? How do we understand it? How do we apply it? You know, a lot of people memorize the law and a lot of people knows about it, but not a lot of people knows how to apply it. Marami sa atin, you know, we memorize verses upon verses, but sometimes we fail to understand and apply it into our lives. And this is the reason why we need to thoroughly study what is being told about us. So the man answered, and sabi naman anong yung lalaki, yung lawyer, he answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, if, you're, if you, we are going to look at this, 